In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about the emotional landscape of someone at this stage of psychological development. What emotions are they feeling and why? How do they relate to the world on an emotional level and how are, as they're interacting with the world and relating to their actions and to their sense of self, what emotions are arising? So the one thing to keep in mind is that one tends to suppress their own needs and wants a lot at this stage in order to fit in. So therefore, a lot of anger is suppressed because anger threatens the status quo of the group. And as we will get to in a moment, one feels a lot of fear of being excommunicated from one's group. So if the anger may lead to being excommunicated from the group, one is going to suppress that anger in the name of conformity. And so at this stage, one feels very certain about how the world works. There's this absolute conviction of this is what is right and this is what is wrong. This is what we'll get into in the moral landscape lesson. But because one is so certain about how the world works, um, one doesn't question the truths and the validity of one's beliefs. And so guilt and shame are very common emotions. Um, and this will relate to the certainty and the conviction because if one is absolutely certain about how the world works, that means that one is absolutely certain whether one's actions are right or wrong. One doesn't question or doubt or feel like a curiosity bound, huh, what, like, what does this action mean? It doesn't try to understand one's actions. It says, if I do this action, I am wrong, it is bad. If I do this action, it is right and it is good. And so... If, if one's actions fall into the category of bad or negative, one is inevitably going to feel a lot of guilt and shame. Like, oh, I know this is a bad thing that I did. I feel shame. I feel guilty for it. If I don't conform to what the good actions of the group are, I'm going to feel shameful. Um, and this is how through these mechanisms of guilt and shame, these are not good emotions. Guilt and shame do not feel good, as you know, as you have experienced. And therefore, the guilt and shame are like defense mechanisms for one's identity. It's how one forces themselves to conform. If one felt no guilt and shame for these so-called bad actions, one would be excommunicated from the group. And so therefore, these are like, these are like defense mechanisms for one to maintain their in-group status. And again, because one's needs and wants are telling them to do a certain thing, but doing so is also seen as bad and as contradictory to what the group wants. One feels a lot of internal division in one's psyche. One wants to do this, but one's group says to do this. And so those are clashing. There's division. There's suffering there. Um, and this leads to a lot of self-hatred and disappointment, you know, like I... There's a lot of disappointment in why I'm suffering so much. Why am I so sad all the time? Why am I um, not able to do what I want? And I'm following the needs of the group. Another thing that are another thing in the emotional landscape that arises is this fear. There's a deep fear of being cast out of one's group. This is the deepest anxiety of someone at this stage. All anxiety at this stage sir, is surrounded by being anxious about whether one is going to maintain their status in the group or whether one is going to be shunned and ostracized. And so being accepted by others is of utmost importance. And anything that would potentially lead to ostracism is, is like treason, you know? So questioning the validity of the truth of the beliefs of what the in-group cognitive landscape of this stage is, questioning that, having curiosity about it, thinking about some ideas that may challenge that. These are, that's like treason. That's not going to happen because that directly triggers one's deepest anxiety and fear at this stage of development. Another part of the emotional landscape is that 
one perceives and how one relates to other people is that one perceives that other people think, want, and feel as they do. And so they project their entire emotional landscape onto other people. And they think that other people are experiencing the same emotions as they are in life. Whereas if someone is at a higher stage, they're going to be, they, they're going to have a lot more subtle, differentiated ways of viewing their emotions, but someone at this stage isn't even able to comprehend that because their views of emotions are very large and undifferentiated as we will get into in a second. So they project that onto others. There's a lot of demonization and projection. So one thing to keep into account is that everyone in life is seeking love in one form or another. Love is connection, it's union, it's peace, it's happiness. Everyone is seeking these things. And how people seek these things at different stages is going to be different. And um, from how I currently understand it, the higher stages are often more effective at getting to the heart of that love that they seek, the, or not the higher stages, but the later stages, the more inclusive, more complex stages. And so how this stage receives love, how the conformist stage receives love is through one's group. All the love and security that one receives is from their in-group. So let's move on to a little bit more about the internal dimensions of someone at this stage. A lot of the anxiety, I guess that we talked about the main anxiety, and this leads to a lot of worrying. One is always worrying about how others are perceiving them, if others are approving of them. Their entire self-worth is based on whether others approve of them or not because their self-identity is based on their group. Therefore, high self-worth equals high approval from the group. Low self-worth equals low approval from the group. Now, how does one view one's emotions? We talked about anxiety, worry, fear, depression in terms of self-hatred and disappointment guilt and shame. One usually doesn't differentiate one's experience this much. We're talking about these because if you're listening to this course, you most likely have a very differentiated and you're able to access more subtle dimensions of emotions, of your emotions. But someone at this stage isn't going to say like, oh, I'm feeling guilt. I'm feeling shame. I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling sadness. I'm feeling depression. I'm feeling anger. I'm feeling a subtle division in my psyche, you know, someone at this stage isn't able to make that many distinctions yet. So how they view their emotions are very undifferentiated. A lot of times they just suppress all of their emotions, or at least the majority of their emotions. And so they define their emotions at, in broad ranging categories, I feel good, I feel bad, maybe I feel a little bit happy, a little bit sad feel a little bit afraid you know there's there's some differentiation there but not a lot they're not able to understand maybe why these emotions are happening or where they're coming from and so they that that is pretty much the overarching emotional landscape of this stage is how they are experiencing their emotions some of their deepest fears and um the guilt and shame that arises.